congratulations for, for first of all, uh, fantastic movie, very funny and very true to the game. <laughs> yeah. And how does that make you feel getting all this reaction, positive reaction? I mean, reaction? listen, when you make a movie, the main thing you're making the movie for is uh, is for the audience. You know, like I often tell people, like if you're trying to make this thing and it's for yourself, like let's go make a sculpture or a poem, you know? <laughs> like we're making a movie, we're making it for an audience. And it's a big audience and it's a global audience and it's got to work and it's got to make people move and it's got to move them. And so the fact that as I, as I read the reactions that are coming out of the screenings and people have been laughing, some of them have been crying and they all seem to have had a good thrill ride for two hours, that's the best thing in the world. It's like literally why you wake up in the morning. And, and you, ha you have such a fantastic cast as well. I mean, I know um, uh, John and, and Jonathan had a lot of say in who was going to be. How much of, of a say did you have in who was going to be in it? The fun thing about John and Jonathan and I is that it's truly like this great partnership. You know, we've known each other since Spider-Man Homecoming. Um, I would brought them on to write the first draft of that movie, and mm -hmm. they just like cracked Peter Parker open and gave him a heart in a way that I think no matter how good those original movies were, I think that Tom Holland's Peter Parker is the definitive Peter Parker now. I think he's the guy and I love him. And it was because of their script. Like their script was so great. And so we came into this like really like as a team and with a partnership. And so it was really the three of us like set out to make this great fun ride. And so every step of the way was really collaborative. You know, every decision we made together, it was never like, it was never like we were on different pages. And I think there's something that happens when everyone's making the same movie that's really important. Oftentimes in Hollywood, different producers and directors and studios are all making different movies in their head. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a famous story when a, when a filmmaker went in to talk to, uh, to a studio executive and he said he wants to make this his 21 grams and the studio executive heard he wants to make it his 28 days later. <laughs> and uh, obviously from the outset, they're making completely different films yeah. and, and that's never gonna work well. And here, like, we set out to make the same sort of adventuring, spirited, 1980s throwback, practical effects-driven humor and heart-filled adventure. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, that made it really fun. So when it came to casting, it was us working together, you know? Like, we would really go through and really target who we thought was great. And because they'd written such a good script, the casting process was actually pretty fun. You've mentioned your work on the, like a, some of the Marvel movies, most loved films, that I have to say, and from the very beginning as well. Uh, how, mu how does that differ from working on this? Because uh, in a way, they are quite similar cast-wise because uh -huh. it's a big ensemble, ensemble cast, but, uh, but it's also very different. How? It's super different, but it's also super similar. And I like to think that it's most similar to when we were making Iron Man 1. And when we were like really at the beginning stages and you're, you're just making a film. When we set out to make Iron Man 1 in 2006, I was 25 years old and we were just like diving in and we had no idea if it was gonna work, but we were gonna try to make something that we loved and that like captured the spirit of what we thought made Iron Man great mm -hmm. and, uh, and try to translate that to the film. And uh, when we started with this, it's like, here we are. We have no idea if it's gonna work, have no idea if people are gonna respond to it, but let's try to capture the spirit of what makes the game great. And so the difference is, you know, in Iron Man, you have stories that are like really, like this happens and Tony Stark does this and Tony Stark does that. And here, you don't have characters in the, in the lore that do so much specifically, but you have a really specific place. You have a setting that's really specific and you have creatures and monsters and races and classes and like these very specific elements from D&D. &D. But the main thing we realized that we were trying to capture was the thing that happens when people sit around a table and play D&D. &D. That was the real spirit we were trying to capture. And, and Wizards of the Coast that owned the brand, that they were like real partners on the film, and they were like, yeah, no, capturing the spirit is the key. You want to feel things go wrong. You want to feel like someone threw a two and like everything went to hell. And you want to give the audience that experience of like, this is pure chaos, but it's really fun to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, you mentioned the sort of the, the, the the obvious things that people have been compared it to. And I think um, the Goonies has been one of the yeah. sort of the, the thing that's been repeated. And uh, I mean, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked the directors. What kind of films, what films did you grow up on? What films did I grow up on? Well, like, I That I, inspired your, I mean, your the later films, work. The films that I love, that I always go back to, uh, for me, are Goonies and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, and there's just like this like a sense of whimsy and fun in Ferris that I think is just like that's why we go to the movies. You know, I also love Airplane. Um, and I think there's like a, a bit of that absurdist comedy here. Yeah. Like there's not like it's not 
Shirley must be kidding. I'm not kidding and don't call me Shirley, but it's like, it's in that vein of like silly comedy that just makes you laugh. My wife compared it to uh, Three Amigos, which is her favorite film, uh, and Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I feel like you captured my childhood in this movie. Yeah. And uh, I really think that's what we're all trying to do is just like capture that thing. And it feels like it's missing from cinema right now. Everything feels a little darker than it needs to, a little more serious than it needs to. No one's taking the time to have fun with this stuff. It's like, the stakes are so real. And I'm like, great, I love that. But also like, give me people. Yeah. Give me a family that can find each other and fall in love with each other and like, have each other's backs, you know? Can we talk about Hugh Grant, obviously? Oh, I can talk about who, Hugh Grant all day, whatever yeah, you want. I, who is obviously, as we know, is a national treasure. and International one, treasure. International treasure and one of the fun, funniest people around. How was uh, working with him? It was great. I mean, the fun thing about getting Hugh to do this film is he doesn't like any screenplays. He doesn't like any movies. He doesn't like anything. He's <laughs> he's a bit of a, of a curmudgeon in that regard, which is lovely, right? It makes him so fun to try to charm. And so we'd sent him the script, and it says Dungeons and Dragons on the title. We didn't even have a subtitle yet at the time. It's just like, this is a Dungeons and Dragons movie. And I think his first reaction was, oh, bollocks, this is a bunch of garbage. <laughs> and uh, But he was nice enough to give it a read because, you know, we were going to pay him if he did it. And so he was like, I'll give it a read. And I think he, uh, he called us two days later, which is really fast in Hollywood times, to have sent it and get a call two days later. And he said, uh, which one of the writers is British? And uh, the guys took that, and I think it was, like the biggest compliment of the film because it was like, who is Monty Python over here? Like, who captured that thing? Yeah, yeah. And so he, he fell in love with the script. And so it was really easy once that happens because we're all making the same movie. And again, going back to what I said earlier, it's all about making the same film. That was the next thing I was going to ask you. It feels so British. It feels so Monty Python. It feels very sort of, you know, like the, 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 that kind of humor. Yeah. And uh, I was also convinced that somebody <laughs> British had written it, so yeah. Jonathan Goldstein is like honorary British, I think, um, uh, truly. But he and John, they, together those two guys just have this great sense of tone and they knew that like if we could take the fantasy setting and flip it and turn it and give people fantasy, and look, kudos to all the other fantasy stuff that's out there, yeah. I, I, it's all a little too serious for me. Yeah. I, I, I just like, I, I, I can't watch stuff personally that's like dead serious. Like I wanna have a good time. Like I wanna go and, and have a laugh. And, and I think that this doesn't. I think the stakes are real, the characters are real, the situations are real, that's why people are crying in the film at times. But it's mostly you're having a good time with your mates. And that's like kind of what, what life's about. Yeah, well, congratulations. That's Thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed the film. Lovely to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.